that's a tremendous looking trophy. Hello, welcome to Platinum Explosion, number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceanias. My name is Tim Blunt. Joining me, as always, Asher Helper. Hey, Dylan. Excited to be here to talk about PlayStation rumors. I think that's it. I think that is about it, to be honest. But that's fine. Um, I will start with, I'm not going to spend much time on it because I just didn't, like, I'm so close, I feel. But, like, I think I'm nearly finished Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Like, yeah. I mean, How I feel about th- it. Up well, I, th- I think I could have finished it by now. I am doing some side quests because I can't help myself, um, even though, like. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I think I'm less angry about it now that I've accepted the game's mediocre. <laughs> Now that I've accepted it for what it is, I can appreciate what it is. I can at least it play it. And it, like, I'm just like, this is like, I don't know, at best a six in my mind, right? That's where I'm at with this game. So sure. now that I've, now that I've come to terms with that, I can enjoy it for the six it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like I can, I'm, I'm doing side quests to do, uh, to do some cool boss fights or whatever, I'm just skipping the cutscenes. I give a fuck. I'm like, I don't, I, 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 at this stage, I, I, I stopped trying to care. I, um, is the I mean, yeah, every every side quest is the same shit. You get to talk to someone, talk to someone else, then there's a fight. Maybe there's another fight after that. They get you sometimes, or you have to talk to someone else, then there's another fight. It's the same shit. Someone's like, "Oh, I need help over here." Go over thing. I'm like, "Cool, whatever." I just skip them. I'm like, "I, I, I just accept things. I stop caring." I'm like, "Let me just do a bit of fight. Let me do the do the do the thing where I hold L two R two, press some buttons, and things happen. Cool things on the screen. Blah blah blah. You know, that's where I'm at. I did a. Uh, I mean, I was I was I, I've said this a million times now. I don't feel like it's got backwards, but like the last massive icon fight i did they just up they they do keep up an ante as far as like the epicness scale and the music and everything like they are cinematic as fuck is the the how i would put them but you know you gotta play the game in between sometimes and that's the only thing but um yeah i i I should be finished i think i got distracted especially because I did a side quest and then old mate was like, here's the blueprint to like um, the best weapon in the game or whatever. And I'm like, well, now I want that. <laughs> Do I need it? Don't think so. <laughs> I'm like, I might as well get it. Um, but I think I should be, I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe I finish it tonight after we get done recording. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think accepting the mediocrity, being so disappointed was obviously helping fuel my anger the last couple of weeks, coming into it expecting so much more, especially coming off the demo, I guess, and being like more more excited about it. And it just having it being a downward trip since then. But now that I've accepted that everyone was wrong, most people were wrong, I'll say. Some people did I would say I'm more leaning towards their opinions on this game. But the majority I do not fall into with this game. And I don't think you do either. Once you accept fully that you're never going back to playing this game, <laughs> there's still hope. There's this, <laughs> it's just time, you know. Have you played it this week? Have you? Played I have not game? touched it since. You have not touched it. You have not touched the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Mm. It's like you don't really care to play it or anything like that. Yeah. It's like it's tired. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I said I was going to wait last week until I said this potential finish it, but I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm going, to, I'm going to join this. I'm going to join this club. For Spoken's a better game than this. Whoa! What did you give for Spoken? Probably like a six or a six and a half, but I still think it's like. Oh, let's check. Slows it like. Burview. Loading. Um. Oh, fuck. Six. Yeah. So like even if I gave even if I said even if I was to review this and give it the six, I'd say for spoken six is better than this six, if that makes sense. It's high prayers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I think that both games have like issues, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I think I think the more interesting side of for spoken is more interesting than this. I like I actually didn't mind 
like I think the lead character of All Spoken is a better character than Clive, right? That's a I, I don't think that's a hot take. I think the only reason that character is spit on is because of racist and sexist. And, <laughs> like that obviously sways a little bit of that. So I'd say this is the lead character of that game is was more interesting. Combat, the action combat in Forspoken isn't as visceral as this, but I think it's maybe a little bit more concise and enjoyable because it's just sort of knows what it wants to be, whereas this is still trying to be an RPG action game sort of weird thing. Um, and then the, the getting around the world, like having that actual full open world, the parkour system and stuff like that, I don't know, sort of made exploring a little bit better. I would say so far the the overall world of Final Fantasy 16, the world building and all that stuff, obviously shits on Forspoken. There's just so much going on in Final Fantasy. But yeah, I, I would sort of, I, I reckon I would, I'm, I'm joining, I don't know if that's a club, official club for that, but I'm joining club for Spoken is better than Final Fantasy 16. Put on a shirt. Put on a shirt. Might get, might get big stabbed. Put on a sign, <laughs> AEW fans. <laughs> yeah put in put in the audience all right let's dive into the couple of news stories we got for this week <clears throat> so firstly coming from the um <clears throat> what's the official name trade the, the the court battle i don't know whatever anyway the FTC. ftc versus activision thing yeah lawsuit lawsuit yeah uh, so press start right sony accidentally revealed some of its playstation exclusive development costs and they're huge uh so a number of documents submitted to the courts by Sony having been poorly redacted, sensitive de- details seemingly blacked out with a Sharpie, which then didn't hold up against the court scanner and revealing some unseen insight into PlayStation's inner workings, including some of the development costs for its bigger games. According to one document, which has since been pulled from the records but could still be seen in the Verge's reports here, games like Horizon Forbidden West and Last of Us Part Two had astronomical development costs in excess of 200 million US e, uh, USD each. The Horizon sequel was seemingly in development for at least five years, employing around 300 full-time developers and costing 212 million USD to make. Naughty Dog sell uh, Last of Us Part Two, taking even longer to produce, employing around 200 full-time staff at its peak, costing 220. I don't think any of this is surprising. I don't know why. No. This this is not this is not one of those news stories that I read this week coming out of the FTC thing or last week that I was like, oh, that's sh- wow, Sh- shocking. <laughs> what? Someone did the maths and was like, okay, well, employees, base salary, times five years, like that just about gets you know that gets close, you know, as a bare minimum sort of thing. Like, of course, it takes a lot of money to make these games, especially if you're employing 200, 300 people over yeah. the course of five years. Like, so what? I don't, Pete, average out to be $220,000 a year for each employee over the course of this, mm-hmm. not taking into account the costs of like the actual running of like the the maintenance costs and the like, electricity yeah, all the and all stuff. those other kinds of costs. Yeah, the, the little things. Yeah. And that might include marketing and that kind of stuff on top of that. So if you don't know, um, yeah, I don't think it's surprising. When you think that, <laughs> uh, what, Indiana Jones came out, that cost $100 million. Mm. It, it's it's not far-fetched that these uh, video games cost around the same amount of money to make. No, that's the thing. And um, I was trying to think of a good comparison or like how you... It's it's sort of hard to look at the movie industry versus the game industry though because like if you... It's just so much quicker. Yeah, it's so much quicker. Like Indiana Jones, what, like probably they 18 shot last months. last year. Yeah, 18 months turnaround with post, pre, and out, sort of maybe, like a year and a half. Yeah, but it's not like two hours long, whereas what, last yeah. of us, 20 yeah. hours long. Yeah. And they have to create every single thing. <laughs> yeah, not to say that you don't have to create every single thing. No, but Indiana really, Jones, I'd but be yeah. like, shouldn't games cost more? Hmm. <laughs> See, the difference is we don't pay our voice actors a high amount of money to act in the games, not as much as they're paying Harrison Ford. That's true. And they're not paying them a substantial amount for the director to direct the, the film and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then there's a bunch of union stuff that b- puts all the costs up as well. Because yeah. mm-hmm. I, I would say that these this number, $220 million for a game that took five years, really, once, if everyone gets 
shit better at the <laughs> within the games industry, the number actually would rise. Like if you see, if you see the game industry people get paid better, if you see voice actors get paid better, like all these sorts of things, I reckon it would In rise. Theory. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, because you know, crunch would not be a thing, so t- things will take longer to make, mm-hmm. and everybody needs to get paid more. Well, the thing that got me to is so Horizon took five years, cost nearly as much as The Last of Us. The Last of Us cost a little bit less, and they took longer to make it, but they used a hundred million, hundred less employees. Yeah, I'm like maybe if you used a hundred more employees and just paid some people, <laughs> you didn't have to crunch. Is that an idea? Like. <laughs> Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, is the solution just throwing manpower at st- the problem? Um, to make things go faster. I don't, think, I don't know. I don't think it's always a solution, but I think if I think for surely for some areas of game development, like bug checking and you know, like c- just certain things, manpower can be can yeah. be a solution. Creative endeavors, manpower doesn't really make a difference. I think no. for certain stuff, manpower makes a difference. Yes. But yeah, um, yeah, that was a, and the, of course, the funniest thing about all that was just the fact that it came because of uh, Sharpie being <laughs> just what see like almost dead Sharpie. Like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, it's slightly black. That's black enough. You know. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, if these games are taking this much to make, how much is it? All the the Games Pass stuff, all the Xbox size stuff, to cost them to make. You know. How much money do you think they've spent to make Starfield? What? It's been eight plus years, right? Yeah, but it's going to be like, okay, so eight years, five of it was with 30 people in the back room. You know, this is the... But they're still employing the 100 people in true. Bethesda. Yeah. But the, how, this I guess is, they're all working. But how do you then work out costs? Yeah, how do you then work out costs? It's like, okay, Bethesda's employing x amount of people 30 of them are working on this for four years suddenly they move a majority of the team over to this to go full full into starfield mode like you gotta well how do you tell from the the naughty dog how many people were working on them on <coughs> the factions game what percentage of that the people were working on the lost legacy or the uncharted four stuff before? well i mean there's there's according to their own documents okay like I feel like <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, they've assumed, but yeah, they've they've said that. So I'm sure. I assume Bethesda can figure out how much they've spent on Starfield. I assume they would know. Yes, and it would be well north of two hundred million dollars. I would assume so. Yes. Yes, and then they're going to give it away for nothing for fifteen dollars a month. Yes. Cool. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. This is the, the this is the thing because the. They Doesn't pay it? no one. No one gets paid afterwards. That's that's not how. Like all, all the people working on the game now are being paid now. If the game fails, it doesn't actually affect how much they get paid for this game. It's not how it no, it's more. It's more the bill at the top of the chain. Like the individual worker at these places isn't going to care as long as their paycheck is coming in. Yes, but at a certain point, you know, if Gay Pass keeps putting the company in the red. <laughs> I don't know. Game Pass is a weird one. I, I don't like to presume, I without seeing any numbers for any uh, for so many different factors to do with Game Pass. I have no idea if that's that things like what profitable they're, or not. I have no idea. Now I, I, we do know Game Pass has a fuck ton of subscribers. Yeah, and they're making like we also know that they're making like they discourage dollars. people from buying video games. Yes, those are two completely known facts. I don't think it's any different than saying Netflix discourages people from buying movies. I think I've been thinking about it. It's different because Netflix doesn't really have its own product. It doesn't have to pay for its own production. It license it like pays well, it makes, for, they make their own stuff though. But yeah, but they don't. They're not like running. They have to. Don't, they don't have to pay for the day to day running of production companies and that kind of stuff themselves. I guess. So. I guess. But still, still it's still like, it's like them. It's it's to so Netflix. They're doing the indie. They're it's like what Xbox are doing all the indies. Mm. We'll give you the money to make the thing, and that's you know we earn it from there. Yeah, but still, like they don't have 
50 different studios that they have to currently pay for, you know? No. But I don't know how the we don't know how the deal oh no, it's confusing. Game Pass is a just just leak all of it, please, <laughs> yeah. Xbox. You know? So I can know I mean, one way or the other if I'm right or I'm really right. It'd be funny if yeah, it's I feel like out of all the things that could have leaked out of the the court case, that the two hundred and twenty million dollars that it costs to make Horizons like a non I don't know why they got so annoyed about that. I was like, this is, like, this is not yeah, information. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it just raises the... Well, it. I mean, it could go other way. If Xbox isn't spending that sort of money on their their projects, is that why they've, <laughs> they've got no well, IPs or games? it wouldn't matter because they were going to know the information anyway because... Uh, well, I don't know. Would they have not? It was still part of the court case. So someone, people from Xbox would have heard it. Like, it was part of the... What do you mean? Like... It was sealed, but no. I think you know if it turns out that Xbox isn't spending that same amount of money in their projects as PlayStation is, mm. it's like, well, that's why. Or they're spending as much to not have the return. That yeah, really. Like the has. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's would you prefer them not to be spending as much, and that's why their games are inferior, or they seem spending as much and they're inferior because the people making them are not doing as good a job as the PlayStation. I don't know. I know. Any way you wheel it, post session's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a interesting um that I think that's they're supposed to have the court case shut by like tomorrow after we record, hopefully. I think that's what they wanted to do before the like fourth of July weekend was Well, tomorrow is fourth of July. So oh no, sorry, so they think. No, so they no, sorry, after. I think they were trying to get it cut shut for like as soon as they come back. So from like the I, don't know. The I was trying sixth. to read something about it, yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's gonna I, I think probably they're gonna block the move and then Microsoft will appeal again, you know. So I don't think they're gonna block it. I know I think it goes through. I don't I, I think I think I think if you if you any reading about it, it sounds very much like the judge consistently like doesn't the FCC is just like doing a poor job at proving the case, and the judge is like, "What the fuck, you like?" So, <laughs> like, very much like, He's like I'm pro capitalism. Let's let's no. put this through. Well, no, because they they kept being like they the FTC keeps being like, and this is going to affect PlayStation, and then the judge will be like, "So how does this affect gamers, like consumers?" And they'll be like, well, it hurts PlayStation. And then the judge will be like, cool. So, like, it just affects that company, but it's good for gamers. The FTC is kind of shooting themselves consistently in the foot in this court case. If you go watch, like, read up or listen to any of the stuff, it's it's been pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I think they're trying to wrap that up. And then if they don't wrap it up, the thing is that um, Xbox can just buy it. Like, they can push the deal through from, like, the 19th anyway, if it's not blocked. So. Then they just have to handle the UK. <laughs> UK, I was reading about the other day. Um, apparently, the solution is they just get like a th- another company to do to like for like forward their stuff for that there, and then they wouldn't be able to put Call of Duty on Game Pass in the UK, and they'll be fine. Like they they can get around it. Like what the legality. That it would just be really weird where you'd see promotion for the rest of the world, like Call of Duty on Game Pass and all these things, and then in, if you live in the UK, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> they're used to that this, <laughs> used yeah. to that this week. Hey, yeah. <laughs> sports. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, let's go talk about novel leaks. So. Continuing, uh, everything's from press start today, by the way. Uh, new rise of the Ronin details have reportedly been leaked, including a release window. First revealed on the September 2022 PlayStation State of Play, Rise of Ronin excited us with quite a bit of its heavy Ghost of Tsushima vibes combined with hints of Assassin's Creed and the promise of a kind of Souls-like challenge that the developer Team Ninja has provided in the games like past like Neo and Wo Long Followed Destiny. It's been a hot since, minute since we heard anything else about the game, but a brand new leak from an old friend of the internet, The Snitch, has claimed to reveal fresh details around the game, including one we might see at launch. The leaks were shared by The Snitch, a leaker that's proven to be a reliable source of information many times already in a private Discord server. The leaker also claimed that they've seen screenshots of the game, which they haven't shared. Uh, the details are as follows. The game is a mix of Assassin's Creed, Ghost of Tsushima, and Dark Souls. Many item descriptions used to make the lore bigger... Um, 
fucking pretty much like Dark Souls. Uh, numerous side quests that are more like Ubisoft side quest designs. There are difficulty options, skill and technique trees, performance and quality modes, planned romance options, and apparently it is going to release sometime in Q1 2024. I feel like this is good news, surely, for you, because like what like this is one of those games where you watch it and you're like cool this looks interesting yeah. samurai game but is it a souls like can like do, do we care about this game or not um so apparently it's a mix of like does have souls like elements but i guess well, Ubisoft that disc. leans it more towards to me sounding more like okay cool like so does star wars jedi have dark souls mm. influences you know what i mean like is it that sort of so I think plus you got difficulty options. So at the end of the day, if normal's too hard, you drop it down, whatever. So good news. Yep. Very exciting. You know? <coughs> Q, Q1 2024. Yeah. Uh that's the only disappointing thing, you know. Kind of wish it was sooner. Although back end of this year is pretty stacked. So I mean Yeah, I think there's enough coming it's out. Probably so. for the best. Uh Although you do have a lot of free time now that you, you don't need to play Final Fantasy. So. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> remember the, remember a few weeks ago we were like, no, nah, I won't have time because I got Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. But I got Rogue Legacy to keep me company. So. <laughs> what the surprise that was. <laughs> Came in to save the day, really. <laughs> Final leak for the week. Last of Us Part 3 character and casting details have supposedly leaked. Some fresh leaks have appeared from some unlikely sources that point to new character and casting details for Last of Us Part 3, a game that we technically don't know is a sure thing is happening, but seems somewhat inevitable. If Naughty Dog's next major game is indeed a follow-up to the 2020, 2020 blockbuster, the two frequent source of inside information on film and TV side things have come forward with what they claim to be juicy details on how things are shaping up and where we might see the title go for some of its characters. First up is the supposed scoop from at Daniel RPK, who typically posts rumors and leaks from the MCU and other films. Hidden behind a paywall but shared via Reddit, the leak describes a cast and call for what are believed to be some secondary characters in the game. The description reads as follows, quote, part of the plot will be about a group of scavengers surviving on the outskirts of a post-apocalyptic city crammed into a Victorian house that serves as their base. They are looking to cast these roles. Lucas, male, affable, but develops a relationship with another young scavenger will have to turn to show, have a turn to show his dark side. Mason, a male, former soldier. When Val gets put in charge, Mason must choose between his loyalty to Ezra and the house. Val, female, leader of the group. Ezra, male, wants to take the house from Val. Gracious, female, 18 to 25. No details in this character. As many have already pointed out, this sounds equally plausible as a casting call for the upcoming Last of Us multiplayer game. But the series is definitely known for rich side characters, so it's important to stress that these are completely unverified and loose rumors. Another recent tidbit comes from viewer Anon, who frequently leaks reliable information on test screenings and behind the scenes of DC films. Claim the major filming for The Last of Us Part 3 is happening this year, and that will, Ellie will have just as prominent a role this time as in the previous games. I said, look, it's those story details and tweaked and everything is potentially up in the air to be changed, but I assure you, I've heard that the Ellie is, as, is at least as important in The Last of Us Part 3 as she was in Part 2. I can say is that I've been very vocal for quite a while now that Last of Us Part 3 is in development and others are finally noticing major filming is happening this year. Uh, bit of a weird place for these leaks to come from. Uh, do you... I, they are both reliable leakers, just not game leakers, so that's yeah. a weird thing. Um, but it is for like casting of actors, so I guess that makes somewhat more sense from the leaking side. Do you think that A... Last of Us Part 3 is starting some sort of production side this year. And or and or do you think that actual list of characters is for that or the multiplayer game? Uh, I don't think it is. I don't think they're working on The Last of Us. Obviously, all we've heard is they're excited about new IP. Um, I mean, potentially it could be for the, the multiplayer. Um, it's hard to say because obviously there was a lot of talk about it being a... Uh, the, the, the co-op experience with like a full storyline and that kind of stuff. So it would make sense that there would be a lot of characters to involve in that. Um, 
and even like talking about a base and that kind of stuff, like you could understand why that could potentially play into a faction desk game. You know, it could be the the Victorian house could be like the the hub or whatever that you say work at or I don't know, go back to or whatever. Um but yeah, it just definitely it definitely seems odd. <laughs> uh and also we don't really know what state the faction game is. We thought it was we all thought it was much further along than it probably actually is. So um we would have assumed a lot of these roles had been cast already <laughs> or, or done. So I, really, we don't have any idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I would say I'm on the side of that sounds like multiplayer, last of us factions type stuff. And as to the surely this would have been done already. Yeah, but remember, they just delayed the game and said, no, oh, we don't know when it's coming. Yeah, but <laughs> came in and ruined everything. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So... Yeah, I maybe part of the re them readjusting parts of that game is to add a more deeper story connection to it or something like that, and that's what they're doing here. Maybe they maybe they they're fine with the gameplay itself, but they they realized because apparently Bungie was like, you know, this isn't going to last forever. Like, there's no content here. Maybe they're like, you need more story. You need more reasons for people to care about playing your game, like other than just doing the matches. Like, you know. That works for someone like Buddy Watson, but doesn't work for the rest of the world. You know, okay. like maybe you need a story, an actual story, not just a cutscene at the start. A cutscene. Yeah, they're the like, come in, guy. Can you imagine? guys from Bungie go, listen, Naughty Dog. You need story. What the people want? What people want in their video games? Story. story. High quality stories. <laughs> I know. You know <laughs> have you ever heard of them? <laughs> Do you have any idea what it takes to make a high quality story <laughs> in a video game? Tell it well. Yeah. I feel like I reckon it I, I, yeah, it's, it is weird, but it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if that is part of the problem. That they just didn't have enough. Like they had a story but just not enough to string it along or like maybe they only had enough for like the launch and Bungie was like you're not prepared for the you're not prepared for the backlash. You know, they're going to well, hate you. Hate <laughs> well, no, not just that, but I was thinking like are you prepared like I've, okay, so after game launches what what's your plan for six what's weeks, eight game? weeks after? Like what's the yeah, what's the end game? What's the and wouldn't surprise me if Naughty Dog was like, uh, a new map? <laughs> like, like, you know? uh, they just keep playing. Yeah. They just keep coming back. The it thoughts. worked for the first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's fifty people online now. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that's that's what that is. I so I think that is for factions. That said, if this other leak saying about shooting of some of the last of Us part three happening this year I, i'm not gonna say that's too wild of an idea only because if they were to film a teaser trailer so like because you remember that original teaser they did for last of Us part two of just ellie playing the guitar and joel walking into the room and all that sort of yeah. shit like something like that a teaser trailer because they're starting like pre-production on the game because I, I, I reckon if they're starting The Last of Us this year, it's like they're only just starting The Last of Us this year. They're and like, by starting, I mean 10 they wrote, people. It's like they wrote The Last of Us Part 3 on a piece of paper. Yeah. That's how far they've got. Yeah. But but I wouldn't... Yeah, so I reckon if they're filming anything, I would lean more towards, okay, they're filming something to show as a teaser trailer. That's all it is for now. Because mm. they love to put out a teaser trailer for that and then not hear they about it for to, two years. Yeah. But so, you know they've kind of changed their tune. You know, like they don't want to put stuff out too early. But I would still reckon we'll we'll see a teaser trailer for the Last of Us Part Three and not hear about it for ages. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's interesting because obviously we make this comparison again and again. It's like the secrecy of the video game industry. Yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah, it'd just be easier to say what you're working on, and then you know, none of these crappy leaks, well, mm. none of these weird leaks come out. I mm. guess. Actually, the leaks come out, but you know, it's not like they're working on The Last of Us. It's this is it's what The like, Last of Us here's is. Here's a leaked character description for The Last of Us Part Three. A There's thing this we girl know is happening. called Ellie. Yeah, <laughs> missing a couple of fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. I mean, we get we must be getting close. Like, depending on how much how much a Naughty Dog's been working on that new IP, and they would have been working on that. I reckon. I reckon that new IP would have been would have had a small team kicking around on it as they got towards the end of The Last of Us Part 2. You know what I mean? So they would have been working on that game for like f- nearly four, well, probably yeah. four years by now. What? Came out 
twenty came out twenty twenty. So yeah, it's been three years. Yeah, but let, let's say they had a let's say when they got towards the end of like they had a small team working on yeah, that game transition over they transitioned the majority of the team over so that means they've been working on it full time for like three years, nearly four years. Yeah, but you know, we we say that, but you know, every example says like a lot of these titles take like five years in between. Yeah, five six years, but like we're getting close to they can start talking about it shortly. Like no, know. no secret still still fucking secret Illuminati, uh, hidden symbols. Can't everywhere. let the gamers know what we're working on. No. All right, that'll do it for this week's episode of Platinum Explosion. Let us know your thoughts, concerns about anything we've talked about. Of course, no, nah, fuck it, I don't. I hear if it cares these days. ExplosionNetwork.com slash Discord. <laughs> you know, we don't know if that site's going to be up in a... In I don't know. I don't want to even bother telling you to go there. Like, who knows if it's even up and running tomorrow. I mean, the, yeah, we'll probably, our Explosion Pod Twitter will probably still be there. All right, ExplosionNetwork.com slash Twitter. Takes you to you know, maybe, other, yeah. maybe other socials be taking over next week. I don't know. Look for us on... Threads? Unwrapped or whatever. Threads, there you go. <laughs> also, hit us up with that blue sky. <laughs> <laughs> I can't right now. Social media, it's too much. It's fucking mentally draining. Uh, where you can help talk to us and stuff is uh, explosionnetwork.com slash support. A little as a dollar. I guarantee I'll read all of those messages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, until next week, remember, every trophy counts. <laughs>